asked Massive Attack. There's a question just come in from Damon. He said, if you were stranded on a deserted island, not a desert island, deserted island, what three things would you want to have with you? Gee, I can tell <laughs> one thing that you might want to have with you. Well, for starters, water, food and bits of spliff. <laughs> I, knew spliff I think water, in. food and spliff, that's about it for me, you know what I mean? Food, clothes and shelter doesn't come into yeah, it, but water, water, clothes and spliff. Yeah, yeah, if it's sunny enough, that's fine. <laughs> Make a palm, no, palm house. No, I think the choice is a bit limited for me, actually. I could never be deserted on an island without about ten items, really. Those questions are really difficult, because you, know, you, you take them really seriously. They're not meant to be taken seriously. No, you? no, no, no I think a flippin' an flip flip answer might come in, though. So. Satellite TV, pornography, I don't know. Maybe those things might come in useful for anyone, I don't know. But obviously not. I you should say sitting this. on a desert island watching porn on a big video. Why not, mate? On a, on a plasma. Cool. You all right? Um, Rizla, Sorry? Anybody got any Rizla there? Please. You can have a top of that lovely crystal while you're at it. Yeah, sure thing, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. If you don't ask, you don't It's the first time John's ever drunk crystal, actually, as it happens. Well, uh, it is. I'm a, very cheap, live on the I'm a very cheap kind of guy. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you, mate. All right. Uh, Foxy. Just come in. There's a question just come in from Foxy. Um, Oh no, there's an even better one actually from Foxy. 3D mentioned that he was listening to different genres of music before while recording. What were some of those albums and did any of them serve as inspiration for anything on the new record? There's a lot of albums, a lot of, a lot of old second hand albums and I'm not even going to try and name them because I can't remember. Okay, cool. Uh, can? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can. Everyone uses can these days. Okay, here's one for G. Bex has just got a uh, typed question in. Bex asked Massive Attack, sitting in anticipation of Daddy G's DJ set in Belfast on Saturday. Um, when you played Belfast? When was that? When was I playing in Belfast? Anyway, moving swiftly on. I was just wondering, would either of you rather work as solo artists or is Massive Attack the way of the future for you both? That's a really good question, actually. We can reveal now and there what, um, what, the, what, what the intentions are. Actually, you love each other right now. I don't really know really. I think there's a lot of things that, you know, maybe that we cover in the studio that we might just leave alone because you know, we're, we're trying to sort of interact, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think maybe, I don't know, who knows in the future, you know, like what could happen. It's not, I, mean, it's it's, 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 I mean, the thing is, when you're sort of getting on and you're, you're sort of like happy in what you're doing, there's loads of room for sort of like doing your own thing and being comfortable with that. There's no competition. It's just, you know, it's just we're comfortable with each other, what we're doing, so we can do other things, I and mean, it's not a problem. You know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a competitive thing at all. It's very, com it's camaraderie, and it means you've got space to do what you want to do, to sort of like move in other directions. But we both know that we've got each other's sort of like, I sort of like feelings mm -hmm. in our hearts. Do you know what I mean? So we will work together, and we will, we'll try not to sort of piss each other off and fuck each other up. Do you know what I mean? And the fact is, you know, we've been working together for like 17 years now, really which is kind of quite a long time. So, um, can you remember the first time you two met then? Or was it lost in a smoky haze in the dugout? No, not at all, no, because like, all that illusion about massive smoking loads of splits and all that isn't oh, quite... nonsense. It's nonsense, it, really, really, you know, yeah. the only person... Well, <laughs> I kind of smoke, I kind of smoke, I smoke for the band, that, and it's always been like Well, you're that. smoking for two, really, aren't you? I smoke really? for five. My parents give me grief forever because of his habits, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not about that at all, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, we've got a good understanding, you know, we have our ups and downs and, you know... Like a love marriage, each other, we hate really? each other, and, you know, but that's kind of the exciting thing about working together, really. You know, it's not bullshit because you know, we do get off on working together mm. still, you know, after all those times. So there's still something, you know, in essence that's that's still there with Massive. Cool. I think, to be honest, uh, we're the most humble of the whole bunch, really. So we've the two humble ones have always stuck together, really. <laughs> I mean, the Wild Bunch, you know, because it's, it's been a long, sort of rocky process <coughs> from like the Wild Bunch involved with Miles and Nelly and Mushroom mm. and all that to where we are now. So, um, you know, it's, it's all. I mean, there's been a yeah. I mean, for a film, it would have, it would have a huge cast, wouldn't it? Yeah, totally. The whole monarchy, yeah. Nelly, uh, Nelly on his yachts, fanning around with Madonna. But like, you know, I think the two principal members are still. You know, <laughs> I think the talent's still. Who here. would play you <laughs> in a film of Massive Attack, there, G? Who who would be man enough to take that on? Okay, moving on to the um, purely obscure Azul, Azul, Azul. Um, has typed in a question. I recently listened to the new track Nature of Threat. I've been listening. <coughs> I hated it. You hated it? No, and they hated it. Oh, well, let's have a look. I've been listening to your music for a very long time and saw the many changes. This song is even darker than Mezzanine. 
Will you still s stay true to the beautiful vocal pieces that I adore your music for? Will there be featured female vocalists on your future records? I think you've kind of answered that already, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that track, to be honest, was very sort of rushed. It was, it's a track we worked on for a different project which didn't happen. And we sort of like put with, you know, with the Mark Quinn project. And we just threw a vocal down very quickly just to sort of like, just for a laugh really, to make it sort of complete sketch in a way. It's an unfinished piece of music, it's a bit of fun, nothing mm -hmm. more. It shouldn't be taken seriously to be honest. We've got an idea maybe on this album that we might finish, we might do the album, it might be 10 tracks long, but over the sort of following year after that, you might be able to sort of like download tracks that belong to the album. I see. Four or five extra tracks, so the album will be incomplete. I think every album should have a set of dotted lines afterwards. Because mm. you're never really happy with the way it ends, like I said before, so maybe the tracks you're not completely sort of convinced with at, at one moment, two, three months later, you might want to finish and you add that to the album in your head. So why not let everyone else hear it in the same way? Mm. It's kind of a good thing really to sort of lay down a sort of blueprint of, you know, maybe of a direction that you might be going in. And, you know, with, with us, there's so many different infinite directions. Mm. That is just one sort of vibe that Dee mm. sort of put down on the track. So, you know, it's nice to get something down. And it's kind of, you know, like Dee saying, it's kind of rough. Mm. But, you know, it's, you know. Has this been released then? Or where, how, do, how do they hear this track? This is the one where you can download it. Oh, it's downloadable. See. Okay. <coughs> I mean, you've always sort of embraced, uh, you know, you've always had the whole gadget thing going on and your flat is full of, you know, Nonsense. plastic rubbish from Japan and all sorts rubbish. of bits and bobs and... Uh, uh, rubbish? Not rubbish, really. rubbish, toys and gadgets and... It's never and, rubbish. And bits and bobs, I should no, say. I've never washed this. It's the state of that. Fucking sleeves on that. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to wash your clothes, they wash themselves. But is the stick a part of the outfit, actually wrong. Do you, or is that on you? That's actually a label I can get off with a pair of scissors without breaking the tool, but you know. <laughs> I actually it? quite like the look now. Yeah, it's alright. Corona my sleeve. That's <laughs> I've completely forgotten what I was talking about then. Next Any question. Right. Um, how and why did you link up with the Red Cross? asks Alan Cook. Question just come in. Uh, uh, oh, how's the next album shaping up? We kind of answered that already. So, do you want to say a little bit about the work that you've been doing with the Red Cross so far? Um, I mean, to be honest, we we try our best to sort of get involved in in sort of organisations as we tour the world and as we sort of go around. It sounds really lame, that, doesn't it? As we tour the world, what a load of bollocks! Like I start again, but we do low trotting kind yeah, of guys that you are. I can make that, doesn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> as we tour the world, we try and help everybody. But I mean, well, you kind of ambassador, global love ambassadors. Yeah, exactly, mate. <laughs> Let's call it a day there. But I mean, no, we do. We've been involved in everyone we can be. You know, in in sort of like when the sort of when it seems kind of um, relevant to do so. You know, because mm. there's so much going on all the fucking time, and you know, it's beyond over most of our heads the depth and sort of levels of, sort of the shit that happens in other countries and suffering. And it just happened to be during the Mozambique sort of like crisis, we happened to be in, involved in this Armani ad situation. And rather than turning it down, we felt we could <coughs> use the music to good effect. And Bristol was teamed up with a city in Mozambique mm. called Biera. Mm. So we thought that, yeah, we can do something direct, mm. which had an immediate response as opposed to something we don't understand. The Red Cross is, is different in the sense that it delegates the money in the way it feels is most needed. So this is very, it's kind of like a very slow, slow process. But I mean, all these things, was, we get, they go on. It's not like we did this Armani ad and that was it. We're trying to sort of keep the whole sort of thing going on with a t-shirt, which goes, the sales of the Armani t-shirt with our design on goes to charity. And, Everything we try and do, we're trying to link with that, so we can mm. try and keep the thing moving. Mm. I think a lot of people feel that once the, sort of <coughs> like, once the headlines have sort of like seeped away, then that's the end of it. But you know, you've got it's, it's still there, isn't it? And some of the profits from the sale of your book are going to go all to the profits, as well. all of them. After all, after the production costs of it, which are pretty considerable, unfortunately, because it's like a one-off thing, all the profits will go to back to Red Cross. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do a plug for the book while we're at it? No. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, Jason Stevens has just put a question in. Are you happy with Danny Wilson at the helm for City? As, I've been, as I've been unable to see them this, se this season, as I play myself for Porter Butt FC in Bath. Place for who? <laughs> Porter? P Porter Butt. <laughs> okay, Dan, okay. okay. Porter. Well, nice, Second. So if you start with your football career, you'd be there as well, mate. Okay. Well, you stay for playing for Bath City or something, I think, or some crap team like that. Could have gone way or one way or the other. Danny play, Wilson? Though. He's at the helm of Bristol City, yeah? Yeah. He's, no, he's I, I don't know that. Are you still City? Because you both used to follow City pretty... Uh, Not really, know, you no. Know, I don't want to follow City. No, I don't want oh. to follow City. I like him because, you know, that's my part of town. You know, yeah. you know there's an affinity to either one of Rovers or City, but... I'm not really into football, really. 
I am, it's, that's a lie. I mean, it's Chelsea. What are we talking I'm about? Chelsea. Should we say that? Glamour. It's, 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 it's all, all about the glamour, Richard. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes, please. But Danny, Danny Wilson, go on. Danny Wilson. Where do you stand on the Danny Wilson it's great manager and It's great that they gave him a chance, you know. And they gave him a chance to sort of like, you know, sort of work slowly, had a bad start mm. for the season, didn't panic. And it's great that um, that he's stuck with the, the kids from last year that sort of come in like Tony Pulis did the season before and just fucking buy a load of old donkeys and try and sort of get them to work to his fucking methods, which is crap. And we all suffered greatly for that and he just did it properly, you know. 